Dirty Dancing, when it came along, it just blew the lid off my life. I had no idea what stardom was. And it's that kind of stardom that will never go away. We knew if we wanted to stay real as people and stay connected with our hearts and souls in some way, we had to get out of Hollywood. So this is our little ranch, and we're just north of L.A., backed up against the Angeles National Forest and the San Gabriel Mountains. So it's like having a million-acre ranch. I just get on my horse and go and disappear. Training horses and, and living a, a life that is very connected with the food chain and the life cycle is, is a very grounding thing. You know, I, I raised and trained um, purebred Egyptian Arabian horses, and they're incredibly smart. But they're also a wonderful emotional barometer. If I go out to work with my stallion and I'm not 100% accounted for, uh, he won't work for me. That's a great lesson for life, too. My mother really believed if you ever wanted to be an artist, you had to be well-versed in every level of the arts, you know, as a, as so I got, I mean, I've got pictures of me in, you know, when I was uh, six in sailor suits and, and tap shoes. You learn a level of perfectionism where nothing is ever good enough for you. It can always be better. You can always keep seeking and trying. I wouldn't trade that discipline for anything else in the world. It just gave, it, it just made me realize if it's worth having, it's worth working for. I live, I live by my father's Texas cliches of uh, nobody said it was going to be easy. Pay your dues. Only the strong survive. If it's worth having, it's worth working for. And, uh, and uh, I think that mentality is the only reason I've had whatever success I've had in my life. Eleanor wrote a fun, enjoyable lark of a movie that had some, some, some interesting, deeper subject matters. You know, that it's, that it's the funky little Jewish girl that gets the guy because of what she has in her heart, not because she's the hottest chick on the block. And... Um, People trying to find themselves, Johnny and Baby, you know, dealing with similar issues but coming from completely different walks of life. Uh, Johnny from the streets of Philadelphia and, and um, the dancing needed to have that street edge. It needed to have that dangerous, dangerous, uh, unpredictable edge that just borders on rage, that borders on just something trying to release and come out and, and uh, trying to define yourself and who you are and... And uh, a lot of people say this um, was a movie about the loss of innocence, and I believe it was a it, it was a movie about the rediscovery of innocence. The North and South took you know, took my life to um, an amazing place because to get to play a character from eighteen to you know as a general in his fifties sixties was a wonderful training ground for an actor. But I was my, and that was my first taste of the insanity of, of stardom. You know, I went to wherever Germany and, and, uh, uh 20,000 fans broke through 15 bodyguards and got a hold of me. And, um, that's the one thing you can't plan for is, uh, in being in this business is, is what happens when stardom and fame happens. You can't anticipate it. You, you, you don't have, we don't have the ability to, to, you know, understand it until until it really happens and i really thank goodness that that i had a head on my shoulders uh i wasn't willing to believe the hype uh the sexiest man alive thing all that stuff it's like it, it was an ego boost um but it just made me more focused on trying to become a better and better actor and keep training and studying and and seeing how far i could take this i can never hide anymore i can you know um and then when you added uh, the cult following movies from Point Break to Roadhouse and Next of Kin to The Outsiders to Now Too Long Fu and City of Joy and, and Ghost and, and um, uh, there's no place to hide anymore. But the nice thing is, if you get your head screwed on straight with it and you realize that it's, it's an opportunity to give something back, back to the world in some way through people seeing life for themselves different through your eyes, that's a true gift. And I'm really thankful that that sense of gratitude, you know, came into my life as early as it did because I'm not sure I would have survived this fame stuff. It's been interesting because uh, the Righteous Brothers, Bill Medley and them, uh, have we've all uh, we've all had a lot to do with, with each other's lives, you know, because of course Unchained Melody from Ghost and and. And the time of my life in uh, uh, Dirty Dancing and uh, When a Man Loves a Woman and, and other songs for uh, Roadhouse. Uh, Dirty Dancing launched uh, me and the Righteous Brothers uh, 
uh, I've even thought about going on tour with them. Um, and me and the Righteous Brothers being really involved you know, with each other for a long time after that. But the soundtrack has been blow. I've got platinum records all over the place in there. Um, She's Like the Wind has cranked up the charts, I think, six times. It's now in the Hall of Fame with the Beatles yesterday as one of the most airplayed songs of all time. And, uh, of course, you know, I didn't want to look like, you know, just another act actor trying to capitalize uh, and do music at, at a time when a lot of actors were doing that. So what I've done since then is stayed in the background. I put two songs in Roadhouse. I, uh, Larry Gatlin and I did a duet together called Brothers for Next of Kin. Uh, and Lisa's in my dance movie, uh, One Last Dance, uh, that we just released. Um, uh, we wrote and I sang the two big songs from the movie, two of the best songs I've ever written, actually. And uh, so now Michael Lloyd and Eric Boulding, who wrote all Johnny's Mambo, all my Latin stuff for Dirty Dancing, I just connected back up with these phenomenal producers and musicians. And uh, and uh, so now I may go ahead and I think I've waited long enough to where I might be taken seriously as a musician. So I'm probably I'm working on an album right now. So Dirty Dancing um, was the birth of a lot of things in me. I learned a big lesson when I, when I was 13 years old is I quit dancing, quit the arts, and started talking it down, thinking that people would leave, you know, the guys would leave me alone and stuff. And it didn't change a thing. And I made the decision at that moment in my life that, that nobody was ever going to stop me from going for or believing in what I, what I believed in as long as I lived. And uh, so Dirty Dancing g gave me a chance to go back to that and reanalyze reanalyze that for myself. Johnny Castle gave me a chance to go back to my years in Texas and, and doing something that people, other people couldn't understand and and, and uh, uh, it gave me a chance to readdress my, my hurt and uh, and my and I guess that street kind of rage that was still in me at, at, at feeling wronged, you know, because I'm a person that uh, absolutely believes in justice and fair play and, and always giving people a chance. And, you know, growing up, when you get into your, your stuff, you're not sure you, you deserve, you deserve the, 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 the hassle you, you know, you, you took. But um, uh, something about Johnny Castle and turning into this guy from South Philadelphia and finding the parts of, of Patrick Swayze that were similar really gave me a chance to start addressing that part of myself that, that, could rise above, um, no matter what anybody says. I've been writing music for a lot of years. I think my, my first one I wrote when I was 10 years old called Sweet June Farts. Uh, it's very, just sitting here, sipping at my beer, cutting them Sweet June Farts. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and the rest is history. Uh, um, I've always said I'm, I'm, I'm sort of a, a romantic to a fault. You know, I... Uh, I'm big on love songs. Um, it actually took after this. Uh, my first bands, they nicknamed me Broadway Buddy because I had such a legit sound in my voice. So it took it took quite a while to be able to break that and resist that, uh, and find that rock and roll kind of gravel and and do other things. And so, uh, Dirty Dancing built me a recording studio. North and South uh, bought me this place. And uh, uh, and Dirty Dancing allowed me to really flush out and, and develop the musician in me. And I realized that I needed a rock and roll career, like a hole in the head. Uh, so um, music was it was good enough for me just to just to disappear in my subterranean recording studio and 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 write. And um, but I've been doing it so long now uh, that. I figured, well, let me just put it out there and just go for this underground thing, not a look at me kind of music career, but uh, just put an album out and see who responds to it. I'd actually had, you know, the the opportunity to learn from some some pretty cool people before that point. I got to work with Jimmy Stewart and Gene Simmons and and uh, Lloyd Bridges and and. Um, um, uh, Gene Hackman in Uncommon Valor. It was, and it was a wonderful thing I learned from Gene Hackman. Um, he was a very intense man, very focused. But when he had to deliver off-camera work for, you know, when a lot of, a lot of actors just sort of phone it in when they're, when they're not on camera. And Gene 
I didn't. I don't care whether it required tears or heavy emotion or whatever. He was always there for that other actor, and uh, and always put one hundred percent of himself into that giving. You know that that uh, that com uh, camaraderie and that spirit of giving everything you could to help that the, the actor that's on camera. And uh, so I was really fortunate, you know, to have had some. I called them teachers. They may not have known they were teachers, but I learned a lot, you know, from them. When you're going to dance 16, 18 hours a day, you got to you got to train hard. Um, um, but in in my life, I've never had allowed myself the opportunity to get out of shape. You know, in in um, the things I do. The first thing Lisa and I did uh, in our house is is built a big dance studio onto the end of it. Uh, because once you're a dancer, you're always a dancer. You never stop. I mean, you in the middle of the night when nobody's around, nobody's looking, you go in there and put on music and just go. Um, and uh, it's a gift that once, you, once you've touched it, once you've obtained it, you, you can't ever let it go. So um, now I have to say, getting ready for One Last Dance, our dance movie, which is much more born out of... Uh, of the classical ballet world or contemporary ballet it took five years to get in shape and three years to choreograph um so um i just never had a time when i you know i, I just uh, when i've ever allowed myself to get out of shape and then a lot of hard labor on a ranch and training horses and that kind of thing and uh it's just uh, a lot of people kind of hate you know have to work so hard to stay in shape and and um, I just haven't. <laughs> Dirty Dancing gave me the money to build a uh, build a very cool uh, recording studio, which has now been through many incarnations. Now that whole recording studio is in one Macintosh lap laptop computer, and I don't I don't need any of the rest of it. Um, but Lisa's always after me. She's you know saying, "Turn that equipment off and just play your guitar." Um, and actually, she was saying, she'd been saying that to me for a lot of years, because when I was writing She's Like the Wind, I got into the recording, and I had my little recording set up in the hotel room and everything, and got so wrapped up with the technical. She said, turn that stuff off. Just play your guitar, and you will write a beautiful song. And, uh, and I said, it's all for you, babe. So um, I think me and Stacy wrote, wrote ourselves a pretty beautiful song. If you get two set in your ways or too straight ahead or you design a journey of a character or, or the arc of a character and you just play that the life can go out of it you know and so what i try to do um uh being taught by milton Casellas and roy london and different different acting coaches that have been wonderful in my life is not get stuck into ego uh, and keep coming from that place of i don't know because when you come from i don't know beautiful things and uh, can happen uh if you get set in your ways and come from i know ego starts and I shoot ego's ugly head down the moment it rears itself.